This is September the 18th, 2017, and this is a pre-flight of Cessna 5739 Romeo. This is a 1965 Golf Cessna 172, and the pre-flight shows the wings. There's no dents, um, no, no damage on the wings whatsoever. Uh, the strut is in great shape. Uh, it was recently painted and uh, main the left main gear has new tires, new brakes, new uh, bearings were greased in the last annual which was in May of 2017 and um, everything is good. The uh, flaps, I did not extend the flaps on the on the pre-flight, I should have, but I didn't. But anyway, the, all the connections are there and uh, the left aileron has got both pins and all three uh, hinges, and uh, there's no no nicks, no no bangs, and no, nothing on this airplane. Uh, on the on the wings are really really in good shape. No corrosion. Uh, maybe some very minor surface corrosion was was discovered at the last annual, but we put some uh, corrosion X on it and it was fine. Right um, now, looking at the and wing and looking down the wing, you can see it's fairly smooth, fairly clean. And then at the top, the same thing. It's a very clean wing, no damage whatsoever. All right, and looking back, uh, I did not open the uh, the luggage door, but it was open. And then looking at the embonage, uh, no nicks, no hail damage. Um, the Elevators, uh, it's got uh, threads showing on, on all the connection points, and it uh, moves loose. The rudder moves, is move moves freely, and uh, trim tab, and the right elevator is in good shape. It's got uh, threads showing on both nuts connection points, right, and. Uh, this is the leading edge of that. Looking down the right side, uh, okay. no dance, no dings on the uh, fuselage. And same thing with the wing here. Uh, checking uh, the connection points and the hinges on the on the elevator. I mean, excuse me, the right aileron. It has all the pins in there. And excuse my camera work. But uh, mm -hmm. looking down the wing on the bottom side and on the top, shows to be very smooth. And, uh, and tires are inflated, the new tires again. Uh, and uh, everything looks good at this point. All right, checking the prop. There's no nicks in the prop. The spinner is attached tight. And then uh, open the uh, cowling the oil door. Look, and uh, you can see the um, magnetos that were added on the last annual. It had uh, slick mags that were replaced with these new slick mags with new wiring harnesses at the last annual. And I'm checking the oil, and the oil is, uh, shows shows to be uh, just a little over seven quarts, and uh, oh, excuse me, right at seven quarts. And I've tried to run it about seven and a half quarts. If I put eight quarts in there, it has a tendency, as all these Continental engines do, to throw a little bit of oil. But uh, anyway, I'm going to put one half of a quart in there, and before I take it up for a flight. But this is the end of the. Uh, before start. All right, starting. I'm inside okay. the airplane now, and getting ready to go to the pre-start uh, checklist. Okay, fuel on both. All right, and uh, check the fuel. Fuel's on both. Mixture is rich. Carburetor heat is cold. And uh, I do not use the primer on the plane. I just use the throttle, pump it twice when it's cold, and uh, crack the throttle one time, and uh, just crack it a little bit. And uh, radio's off. And I uh, forget to turn my master on. And so when I give a give a clear. Clear prop, uh, nothing happens, okay. and then I reach down and I turn the master on, right. and 
Looking okay. Okay. And right, it clear. Will. Okay. Here I try to turn it on and nothing happens. And I pull the master out master and I start. Clear. And clear. it starts on the third or fourth blade all the time. And real quick check. Well, pressure's up. Well, pressure's up. Well, temperature's not up. But oil pressure's up. I got vacuum. I got a positive charge on the uh, generator. So everything is looking good at this point. All right. Now I turn my uh, avionics on. And then I, my iPad is powering up. And the iPad is uh, geared to the Garmin 3, uh, 345, which is ADS-B in and out. And it feeds directly into this iPad or any other iPad that you have on the plane or iPhone with uh, for flight on it. Right, and this has an ICOM 200 radio in here that works very well. And uh, for a backup, I carry a portable handheld radio. Right. And now, as everything is checked out here for the startup procedure, I set my altimeter uh, in just a minute, and I'll set my directional uh, on the instruments. And now I'm taxiing out to the runway 17 at Sewell Airfield. All right. And excuse the uh, the camera, Bobby, but. Uh, that's uh, yeah. I change the air, set the airfield to um, uh, 580 feet, and set the directional gyro to match the compass. Okay. And we're ready to go to the run-up area. And when we get to the run-up, right, coming up to the. Uh, Run up area, and turn into the wind, and ready to check the bags. And excuse the uh, camera work, this is not the very best. I should have had somebody in here holding the camera while I'm dead, doing everything. Check the controls, the controls all work. And uh, use the checklist and uh, going through it. Now I'm going to check the mags, turn the engine up to about 1600 RPM. Okay, check the mags. Somewhere right here. Okay, engine up 1600 RPM. Okay, then I do a right mag check. And it drops about uh, 100 RPM. And then I do a left mag check. That drops about 100. And then I do a carburetor heat. And it drops about 100. So everything is looking good. I got the uh, compass set. I got the directional gyro set. And the radio's uh, set. And uh, I haven't. Uh, All right, I have the checklist complete. I'm at the uh, end of 1-7 uh, of Zool Field, which is a grass strip. And um, right now I'm setting the iPad to communicate with the Garmin 345. Once I get that finished, uh, the engine's, uh, everything's ready, and uh, everything's communicating with everything. So I get full power and begin running down the runway. Um, it was a little quick, but here I go, full power, and start the takeoff roll and give it uh, pressure, back pressure to get the nose wheel off and uh, relieve pressure on the nose wheel. And then at 60 miles an hour, it uh, the 172 just kind of takes off and begins flying. A very, very easy plane to fly. Uh, 
and now it's uh, we're airborne and uh, we'll have about we'll clear the edge of the runway about uh, 300 feet and then gradually continue to climb and at about 500 feet we'll make a gradual left turn and we're heading going to be heading east and I'll show you more later all right, we are now about uh, 800 feet AGL and uh, on an easterly heading away from Zool. I, the, uh, the TAC is reading at 2400 RPM and gas, oil pressure and uh, oil temp is good. It shows them about 400-500 feet a uh, minute climb. and. It's going up, and uh, excuse the jerky camera action, but uh, I should have had somebody in here to do the recording when I do the flying, but I didn't do that. Anyway, I'm still climbing at 80 to 85 uh, knots, and uh, if you notice that, uh, the, I can take my hands off the controls. This, this plane, when you set it up to fly, it flies straight and level and very few times do you even have to to correct the uh, wings leveling uh, it, it's a very very stable airframe and uh, and at 2,000 feet I do a couple turns in here and I, fortunately I didn't get those recorded uh, I thought I had them recorded but uh, they did not record but anyway I do a 360 left and a 360 right and uh, fly it for a few and uh, uh, everything is working real fine and uh, the if you look at the iPad the bottom part of that is the moving map with the uh, foreflight and uh, that has the airplane and the the root of the airplane and this is really a great great instrument and being geared into the Garmin 345 it just makes it a very very safe airplane if another airplane is in the area the uh, Garmin 345 in communication with ATC will let me know that that aircraft is is in the area it gives me an altitude of that airplane and um, it alerts me both uh, vocally and on the instrument it will I get a notice on the on the screen that uh, there's another aircraft in the area, and it tells me where to look for it. So it's a very very safe airplane, and you see right there my heading on the plane. And sorry, I didn't didn't get you there, but this uh, has the ICOM 200, and that's a very very good radio, and I don't have any problems with it. And again, I carry a uh, a mobile just in case. All right, so that uh, concludes this part of the, the f flight. All right, on this portion of the flight, I'm going to show you a little bit on the slow flight characteristics of uh, this 172. I dropped the RPM to about uh, 1600 and raise the nose and try to maintain 60 knots and uh, do a couple slight turns here and there and um, it uh, a little bit of drop in altitude but then I raise it and uh, it handles very well slow flight uh, very very stable platform uh, and then I'm fairly near Zool Field and I uh, do a little right turn and then I'll show you Zool Field it's uh, right there off the nose all right, we're ending the flight, and I'm downwind on runway 17, and give a radio call to turning left base for 17 Zool traffic, and the airspeed now is about 70 knots, and uh, I have the camera set now on the on the um, dash right next to the compass, and so. Um, left base at Zool and you can see I-10 in the upper left and we'll cross I-10 on the final to Zool and 
it's flying very stable. It's at about 65, 70 miles an hour now. And I got uh, probably 30 degrees of flaps. And uh, now I give a radio call to turn to final. And I turn final and I have an extended final here. I'm going to cross uh, I-10 and a little, little quick on that uh, left turn to final. But I'll straighten it out here in just a second and set up a landing configuration and uh, lined up for be lined up here for 17 Zool and that's the big green grass area that's directly off the nose. There's some bushes that are about 20 feet high uh, short of the runway so I got to make sure you clear those and then you just let her hold her back and let her land and she'll this 172 will do the rest. Coming in nice and nice and smooth, and again I have a, about a probably about a 10 knot uh, crosswind, maybe 20 degrees off the runway, off the heading. Um, so I have to keep a little bit of uh, left left data run in there to keep that uh, left wing down a little bit. Still coming in and a uh, little bit low on this on this approach, but uh, yeah. okay. Now I got the uh, trees made, uh, so reduce the throttle here and right about right here start a slow flare and hold the nose off. Hold the nose off. And hold it off and bingo, she's down. Hold it off and break and this concludes the flight. So it was a very, very smooth flight. Um, and uneventful, the plane worked perfectly. So if you're looking for 172 to um, build time or learn to fly or just uh, 172 to putt around and go for that $100 hamburger. This is a great aircraft. It, um, it has never disappointed me. And uh, I can't say, the, say that about too many other airplanes. But uh, she flies great. Flies a very stable platform. The engine works very good. And uh, it's got uh, no problems. And uh, so if you're looking for one, 32000 is the price. Uh, you can give me a call. Uh, Ken Hines. And my phone number is 210-863-2180. All right. Looking forward to hearing from you. All right. And this is my hanger coming up to the left.